It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's schools where we test scientific literacy. We invite you to test your own. Play along with us today and see how many of these questions you can get right. We've got two great middle schools here competing today in this our 38th year of competition. Let's meet them right now. First from Greenbelt Middle School, say hello to Nasaiba over here. And the captain is Livia and she is back and Timothy is also on the team, also a returning player. Nice to have you here, Tim. They'll be playing against the reigning middle school champs from Kenmore Middle School. Say hello to Tristan. Hey, Tristan, good to have you here. Kenneth is back. He's the captain. And Jed, nice to you, have you here as well. All right, those of you that are new to the Science Bowl probably are not familiar with the categories of questions we use. Let's share that with you right now. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's Get Physical, questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions, everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here in the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with the easier questions worth five and 10 points. They get progressively more difficult. Finally, 25 being the toughest of them all. We start our teams out with 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds today, we will have a contender to play Samuel Ogle for the chance to move on in this year's competition. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly before we start. Let's go to that re green team, the green belt team, the red team. Livia, would you try your buzzer? Thank you and good luck to you and to your colleagues today. And Kenmore, Kenneth, would you try your buzzer? It too seems A-OK. -okay. Guys, congratulations for being here and representing your schools. You are great ambassadors even before we start. Everybody's a winner here on the Science Bowl. We go alphabetically. G before K, so Greenbelt and Livia, let's play that bowl. Go. Uh, let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points to start us out. You know, the best and tastiest gummy bears have the least amount of this C initial substance that is often used in your kitchen to thicken gravy. Corn Kenmore. Syrup. Corn, syrup. Corn syrup. Not quite, not quite. Greenbelt, what is the C initial substance that you use to thicken gravy with and it makes for the best and tastiest gummy bears? Cornstarch. Cornstarch, yeah, you came close, guys, you came close. Nice try, go red. Uh, green for 20. Green, 20 points. Here's that question for you. This K initialed fruit, quote unquote, of the corn plant is made up of the endosperm. Greenbelt. Kernel. The kernel, yes ma'am. Good answer, good, go red. Uh, potpourri, 15. Potpourri, 15 points. Question is as follows. The great white whale that was featured in Herman Melville's classic book, Moby Dick, was white because it lacked pigmentation in its skin, a condition known as this. Kenmore. Albino. Albino or albinism. Absolutely right. Thank you, Jed, for your help. Go green. Body systems for 15. Body for 15. Question is as follows. For Ariel, the little mermaid, to become human and walk on land, she had to agree to give up this L initialed Larynx. green belt. Larynx? Yeah, her voice box. She lost her voice to get her man. Yes, go red. Uh, Dateline for 20. Dateline. 20 points. Question is as follows. This year's summer solstice, which occurred on June 21st at 1053 AM, marked the sun's rays being directly overhead. What imaginary line? Equator. Green belt. Equator. 
not the equator, no. This year's summer solstice, which occurred June 21st at 10.53 a.m., marked the sun's rays being directly overhead. What imaginary line in the northern hemisphere? Kenmore, any idea? It's the, the, it's the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropa of Cancer. Tropic of Capricorn is down below. It's over the equator, uh, Livia, on the uh, equinoxes, but not on the solstices. Go again, red. You're still in the lead, 100 points. Uh, physical 20. Physical 20 points. Here it is. Invisible to us humans, the color known as bee's purple is a mixture of yellow and more. Ultraviolet. You got that right. Ultraviolet is the other component of that. Nicely done. Go, Ken Moore. You're up to 85. Zoo Parade for 20. Zoo Parade for 20. Zoo for 20. Beluga whales are white. To help protect them from these two predators, one that lives on the Arctic ice and the other below it. All right, I need two answers here. Two predators. All right, Ken Moore. Would one of them be the polar bear? And, um, and the orca? You got both of them, absolutely right. The polar bear and the orca uh, prey on beluga whales because many seals are disappearing, so they're changing their diet. Nicely done, all of you over there. Go green. Green things for 25. Green for 25, the big one in that category. Teams, you should make a fresh cut at the bottom of a live, live Christmas tree so that water can be absorbed and move up into the tree through this sea. Green belt. Capillary action. You got it. Nicely done. Good teamwork over there. Capillary action it is for 25 points. Go red. Potpourri for 20. Potpourri, 20 points. Question is as follows. Interesting. The hunting of this vulpine mammal, V-U-L-P-I-N-E. Yes. Fox. Kenmore. Fox. Fox is right. Descri often done on horseback and described as the unspeakable in full pursuit of the uneatable. They don't eat that fox. Go green. Body High systems score. for 125 20. 125 all. Excuse me. Go. Body systems for 20. Body for 20 points, teams. Question is as follows. The vitamins thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin that have been called the highway to health all belong to this lettered group of vitamins. Green belt. Uh, B. B, they are all B vitamins, yes indeed. Good, red, go. Physical for 25? Physical for 25, question is as follows. It's a visual question, if you look at the monitor in the studio, please. The huge tail of the big bear in the Ursa Major constellation is actually the handle of this big <laughs> green belt. Big Dipper? Yeah, the Big Dipper it is, absolutely. Thank you, Tim, for your help. And that buzzer says we've come to the end of the first round. Boy, it's been a fast one and a good one. Greenbelt is at 170, right behind Kenmore at 125. We'll be back with the second half of Science Bowl in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Great game today. Hope you're keeping up with these six outstanding young people here. Boy, do they know their science. You've seen them on previous shows if you're a fan of the Science Bowl. If you've never met them before, let's introduce them to you right now. Let's go over to Greenbelt Middle School and find out about our players and their schools. Livia, nice to have you here. Yeah. Nice to have you back. Tell us a little bit about Greenbelt. Who is your principal? Um, our principal is Mr. Clement, and at Greenbelt we have many programs. Like yes, and, and the principal is here today, and he'll be out in just a few moments. And tell us the name of your coach. Um, our coaches are Dr. Pippet and Ms. Pagunson. Wonderful. And they, I know how seriously they take Science Bowl, and you are evidence of that. Tell us something about Greenbelt that you think everybody at home should know. Something special about your school. Um, we offer many programs like CRI, TAG, Honors, and Chinese Immersion. And we also have a band and orchestra. Wonderful. Yes, I know there are a couple of musicians here, I think, on the, on the panel and participate in that. Uh, any alternates on your team, Livia? Can you give us their first names? Yes, we have two alternates, Xiaoting and Joseph. Wonderful. They'll be out at the end. We'll give them some face time. Tell me a little about yourself, Livia. You've been here on the show. Why, did you, why do you like the show? Um, I like trivia in general, so this is one of the few shows I think I could handle. So yeah, It's right in your wheelhouse where you're demonstrating that. And someday, what do you hope to do? Maybe something related to psychology or music. 
very nice, very nice. So music, are you part of an orchestra or band there? Uh, no. You're not. That's all right. That's all right. Timothy, nice to have you back with us again. You were a fifth grader, now you're a sixth grader. Uh, you have demonstrated your skill time and time again. Uh, what do you do in your spare time? Um, I read books and play chess, and I, I play a number of instruments. A number of instruments. Tell me how many, or which ones. Um, I play piano, and... Um, and I'm getting ready to play bagpipes, and I play baritone. Bagpipes. I don't think I've ever known anyone who plays bagpipes. That's just amazing. So you're a great, you're a great student. Uh, you're an academician, and you're also a great musician. Thanks for sharing that, Tim. And Nosaiba, tell us about yourself. Uh, Why do you want to be on the show? Um, at home, I really like watching Jeopardy with my family. And I like Livia. I also like um, solving trivia. Yes. Some people have said this is like Jeopardy for Kids, this program, and I don't mind that comparison at all. Tell us what you do in your spare time. Um, during my free time, I like to play the viola. Um, I also love reading books and drawing. Um, my favorite medium of art is definitely painting. Mm -hmm. And I also love watching soccer with my family. Wow, you've got so many different interests. Where might those interests take you someday? Um, when I grow up, um, I would like to do something in STEM. And right now I'm thinking like a software engineer or something in engineering. Wow. Yeah. Well, it'll be whatever profession gets you, they will be lucky. You're obviously a very talented young lady. Let's go over and talk to your competitors at Kenmore. Kenneth, tell us about Kenmore. Who's your principal? Our principal is Miss Turner. Miss Turner, yes. And uh, coach of your team, don't you have two coaches or one coach? Two. two. Tell us who they are. They are Miss Smallwood, our science teacher, yes. and Miss Novick. Absolutely, and uh, they both have done a fantastic job. They gave us a county champ last year, maybe a second champ here. Uh, wonderful uh, teachers, both of them. Tell us uh, any alternates on your team. We have Jeremy and we also have Jackson. Wonderful, they'll be out in a few moments. And also brag about your school. Tell us something, tell the audience something about Kenmore that you think they should know. We have a lot a wide variety of, of after-school clubs, including a number of sports, such as the soccer team, the baseball team, and the basketball team. Yes. And we even have other clubs that are beginning to start, such as the art club and even an anime club. Wow, that is great. And you also have a brand new school, don't you? A brand new middle school. So uh, give me, is it a thumbs up? Is it, is it a great place? All right, that's good. All right. Uh, uh, and Kenneth, yourself, what do you want to do someday? Someday I want to go into IT and help people, others understand technology and get the most out Wonderful. of it. Wonderful. And Tristan, IT is in your future as well, yes? And yes. you like to you tinker with computers? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you the go-to guy if somebody needs some help? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. What do you do in your spare time if you're not on your computer? Um, other things I like to do is play some sports like soccer. Mm -hmm. And I also like to go outside and take some walks. It's nice and refreshing. And I'm also in the environmental club. Wow, yeah. Getting outside is the best medicine for anything. You know, just get outside. Nature is just rejuvenating. And Jed, uh, you want to go to Harvard someday? Yeah, mm -hmm. or MIT, you're shooting high. When you get there, what would you study? Um, I might study math or chemistry. Wow, yeah, you're a science guy through and through, I understand. And uh, I understand you do the, the park runs on weekends. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand you're pretty darn good. Yeah. So, uh, do you run track? Is there is that possible at Kenmore? Um, no, but I do play soccer, yeah. and we do a lot of running on my team. Yeah, I bet you're a good soccer player too. All right, let's get back into the game. It's a close one, 170-125, and let's see. The last correct answer came from the red team. So, Livia, let's go. Zoo parade for 25. Super 8 for 25, big one in that category, is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, and appearances to the contrary, this does not make a good pet. This bush baby, with its prehensile thumbs and forward-looking eyes, belongs to what same order of mammals that we do. Green belt. Primates. We are primates, as are bush babies, indeed. Good, go. Uh, potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25, big one in that category. Multiple choice question. Because drug-taking concert goers oftentimes show up looking cyanotic, C-Y-A-N-O-T-I-C, doctors working concerts have a nickname for them. Here come the Ninja Turtles. Here come the Smurfs. Here come the Minions. 
which ones would be cyanotic green belt? Smurfs? Smurfs, that's right, because cyanotic means blue. Cyan is a type of blue. Good, I like how you parsed that, and I like how you all thought about that. Go red, good answer. Um, Dateline for 25? Dateline, 25 points. Question is as follows. The AQI, Air Quality Index, uses the color scale to indicate our air's cleanliness. At one end, it's code green. That's the best air. While at the other end, there's orange, red, and purple, and there is this M initial color, green belt, Maroon? Maroon, absolutely, which means so bad, don't even think about going outside. We had one of those maroons last summer uh, that kind of got everyone's attention. Good, great answer, go. You're up to 245. Come on, Kenmore, let's jump in here. Go, Olivia. Uh, body for 25. Body system for? 25. 25 points. Here you go. The scapular, S-C-A-P-U-L-A-R, is a religious item that is named for your body's scapula, the bone in your body, better known as this. Skull. Green belt. Your skull. Scalp. Skull. Um, your skull? Not the skull, no. The scapula, S-C-A-P-U-L-A, is a bone in your body, better known as this. Scapula. Scapula. Maybe your backbone. Your backbone? You were close. Your shoulder blade. Your shoulder blade is what we're looking for there. Try again, please. Red. Uh, green for 15. Green, 15 points. The latex used in making kitchen gloves, which can cause an allergic reaction, is a kind of sap derived from this tropical plant, the same one used for making tires. Ken Moore? Rubber. Rubber plant. Rubber plant, that's it. You got yourself 15 pants, points. Go again. 15. Zoo prayed for 15. Zoo prayed for 15. Zoo for 15 points. Multiple choice. Uh, big words, uh, listen carefully. Insects that feed on only one plant, one kind of plant, and use that same plant to lay their eggs on are known as brood pollinators, hybrid pollinators, or gregarious pollinators. Kenmore. Gregarious pollinators. It's not gregarious, no. Brood pollinators, hybrid pollinators, or gregarious pollinators if insects feed on only one kind of plant and that same plant is where they lay their eggs. Brood pollinators? Brood, yes, because brood refers to a group of uh, youngsters. Good, go. Red. Dateline for 15. Dateline for 15 points. This famous scientist, physicist, excuse me, is credited with the theory that the gravity in a black hole is so intense that light is literally swallowed Stephen up. Hawking? Ken Moore. Stephen Hawking. You got that right. Got yourself another 15. Let's go. Green things for 10. Green things for 10. Green for 10 points. The full moon in the month of June is known as this S initial. Strawberry moon. Strawberry moon? It is the strawberry moon. I didn't even have to tell you about when tasty fruits are ripening during that month. Excellent work. Good. Go. Uh, physical for 10. Physical for 10 points. Scientists are working on a way to produce hydrogen gas that won't use fossil fuels, but rather one of these green methods of generating energy. Give me two. Give me two green methods of en generating energy for these points, these 10 points. Um, okay. Solar power and wind power? Absolutely. And I would accept, have accepted hydropower and nuclear power as well. Good. Go. Potpourri for 10? Potpourri, 10 points. Question. Scientists are now working with used but sanitized diapers as a building material that takes the place of this material used in making glass and found on most of the world's beaches. Sand. Sand, Sand is right. Yeah, good. Go. Yes, sir. Um, zoo prayed for 10. Zoo, 10 points. One of the most popular streaming services for television and movies is named for these for this outrageously feathered bird. And more. Peacock. Peacock is right. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Body systems for 10. Body for 10. Of the over 100,000 people waiting for an organ for transplantation, most of them need one of these. Green belt. Kidney? Yes, ma'am. Good. Go. Dateline for 10? Dateline, 10 points. The microplastics that result from recycling plastics are so tiny that they're being found in the air and the water and in our bodies. The tiny particles are less than 5 mm's, which stands for? Millimeters. Millimeters. Millimeters is right. Yes, sir. Go. Green things for 5. Green for five points. 
If you're going for a hike in the forest, you might also say you're going for a walk in this W. Woods. Woods. In the woods is yes for another five. Go. Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. The slogan, only you can prevent wildfires, was said by Smokey the what? Greenbelt? The bear. The bear is right. Yes, ma'am. Go. Um, physical for five. Physical for five points. The chemical element number 92, this chemical element number 92 on the periodic table. Yes. Uranium? It is uranium. It's the one that immediately comes to mind when you talk about radioactivity. Thank you, Tim. Go. You're up to 300 points. Go, Livia. Potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. This word is a body part and a punctuation mark with one dot above another. Kenmore. Colon. A colon is right. Yes, sir. Go. Body Two systems for up. five. Body systems for five points. If a bad cut sends you to a hospital emergency room, you're likely going to get sutures, or as most of us call them, these. Stitches. 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 And the last question of the game is body systems for five points. Uh, no. Is that right? No. No. Dateline. Uh, Dateline. Dateline science for five points. The question is as follows. Turn the light out, please, Debbie. Thank you. Last question of the game is a Dateline question. Some of you may remember last summer there was an out-of-control airplane that was flying across the Washington area. The people aboard had died. They were waiting until they ran out of gas. And F-16s were sent up to chase that plane. We learned that since those F-16 jets flew faster than the speed of sound, this was created. Ken Moore? A sonic boom. It scared everybody in D.C. And with that, we come to the end of a terrific game. Give yourselves a round of applause. Great playing. Great playing. We will double check that score and be back with you in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. What a terrific game here. Look at these scores. 300 points is really very unusual here. 205 is unusual, so hardly any questions, questions were missed. Miss, that testifies to the skill and the knowledge of these young people here today. We're proud of all of them. Our final tally today is Kenmore 205, Greenbelt 300. Congratulations, Greenbelt. You are going on to the next round. You'll be playing Samuel Ogle for a chance to be on our second semifinalist. And Livia, while we're with you there, would you tell us who's behind you? Um, this is our principal, Mr. Clement. Our, one of our coaches, Ms. Pagunson. Our alternates, Xiao Ting and Joseph. And our other coach, Dr. Pippin. A high-powered team for sure. Thank you all. Many of you have a long history with Science Bowl here. You're aiming for your second county championship. You made one step closer. And Kenmore with 205 up there. A nice round of applause for that Kenmore team. Our reigning champion here, winning us middle school in Science Bowl history. Kenneth, you did a terrific job here today. I like your matching shirts, too. Everybody has a matching shirt. All the Cobras are out. Tell us who's back there. We have Jeremy Jackson and one of our coaches, Ms. Smallwood. Ms. Smallwood, thank you for everything you did, getting the students ready here for today. We hope to see you back again. And we thank you for watching Science Bowl. We hope you enjoyed it. And join us for our next round of games here when we get closer and closer to our new county championship. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye, everybody.